G'day mates, Argzy here. Welcome back to Western Australia. Now it's the uh, following morning from where we wrapped up last time. We are over here with the contract harvesters in the oat field and we're not too far away from having this field finished. In fact uh, they're just about on their last land. You can see the headlands there on the left that we uh, did right at the start and just I think it'll probably only be one pass down on the uh, other side there as well. So certainly made good progress through, through this field uh, we are racing some rain though so you can see a few clouds around it's looking a bit murky and we do have some rain on the radar so uh, we're going to try and get this field knocked out as quickly as we can now the other combines the fence uh, and the John Deere's they're all finished over in that wheat field uh, we've got them parked up on the edge of the next field they're going to go into but uh, we've decided we won't quite make a start on that one just yet the, uh, we'll wait and see what the weather does uh, but we've also got the air carts and a couple of tractors lined up in the yard ready to go out and start planting that field as well uh, but again we're not going to start doing that until this rain has passed so really our first chore today or first task today is to uh, get this field finished before the rain so fingers crossed we can do that uh, I'll just bring up the course play course there we've got about an hour so, not quite sure when it's meant to start raining today, but uh, hopefully not before 10 o'clock. So uh, we'll just hang out here with these guys. Might jump straight into a little bit of a uh, montage of the harvest, and uh, we'll catch you when this is finished. And, well, or, or when it starts raining, whichever comes first. You might have noticed during that little montage that we were unloading on the go like we are right now. Now as a few of you have pointed out to me, Auto Drive has had a bit of an update lately. 
and one of the features they added was being unable to unload on the go. So previously we had the combine set to stop, uh, but now the uh, grain carts will catch up with them and do some unloading. Now there seems to be a little bit of a conflict there with the distance to them. I wonder if I offset the grain carts a little bit further from the pipe, whether that would avoid that, but irrespective of that little uh, gremlin or inconvenience, uh, it seems to work pretty well and definitely keeps things moving a whole lot smoother than stopping and starting all the time. So I'm quite impressed with that. Make sure you have the latest version of AutoDrive available from GitHub, not the one that's in ModHub. Uh, but go find the one that is on the GitHub. So just Google AutoDrive GitHub and you will find it. I will try and remember to leave a link down in the description. So I'm just on the very last piece of this field now. We've managed to beat the rain. Took a few minutes longer than I expected, uh, but not too much longer. Certainly having added the uh, unload on the go has helped. Still not, uh, still not perfect. There may be a setting I'm missing, I need to have a bit more of a play around with it at around what level the uh, grain carts might try and un unload one of the combines. Uh, it might also be complicated by the fact that I've got six combines and uh, four grain carts trying to keep them all emptied out. So uh, that could be a factor in it as well. But we've just uh, just got this last little piece here in front of us. You'll see all the other combines are up there all unloaded, lining up ready to head back to the other side of the field. And uh, this one's just got this last little bit to do. Now, one other thing, and I will go and show you in just a minute. I've been having some issues with trucks in the grain cell points, the two at the uh, outdoor cell points. Now, it's been happening for a while where if I want to sell at the second grain point, uh, when they drive over the trigger for the first one, they kind of just stop there, even though they haven't reached the target point. Uh, and I had to prompt them to move on. Now through just reviewing that and having another look I actually realized I could have had two separate paths into the cell points each one had their own route uh, that they didn't have to drive over one to get to the other and that there was a third lane that I could drive the trucks back out so I've made that little adjustment and uh, once we've finished up just at the end of here we'll jump over into one of the trucks and I'll show you what I've done And there we go, all done. So we'll just get these last few oats emptied out. We'll uh, get everything all folded up, which the uh, worker gracefully does for us by folding, unfolding the header. Not quite right, but uh, we'll sort that out. But the grain cart now can head back, they can go get unloaded, and uh, we'll start getting these all packed up and back over to the other side of the field. Just riding along in here with the truck heading into the cell points so I could uh, show you what I've changed for unloading. So previously this truck to get to the second cell point would have turned left in there and gone across that elevator. Now that's a trigger and it stopped there. It wouldn't carry on and would actually if the trailer was in the right spot would start unloading. And the trigger we're heading down over now, once we're out of the trees, uh, we came from the other end. We did a loop, came back down this way. Now what I've done is obviously I've changed the direction and got this truck going in this way so it doesn't go over the other trigger. They each go in their own route and when it's finished it will go up and hang a right at the end of this big heap on the right and there's a lane. They get back down and out the way we came in. So uh, certainly has simplified that. So just a, something to keep in mind, try to avoid sending uh, auto drive routes over more than one trigger. Try and have a course that avoids triggers except for the waypoint that you want to uh, use for that. Right and there you go as you can see we're all empty. Now when I made this course I had to bear in mind that we might have road trains running across it so it's got a bit of a big loop in it to make sure they're able to turn out and to the right. So once we get past this corner and get a little bit of pace up, uh, you'll see where that goes. Go out here to the left, just hang out there a little bit, now we're away from the trigger, turns around to the right, just misses that auger in front of us, it's pretty close, and uh, then we run back down this lane, 
here to head back out onto the road. So uh, that certainly has made the process of selling crops at those two sell points much smoother than it was and I don't, to be honest, know why I didn't think about it sooner. But uh, there you go, even after nine episodes we're still uh, fine tuning things. And here is the rain, so we won't be carrying on any harvesting, we've got everything parked up here ready to go, we will get them all set up and going in this wheat field here once, uh, once the rain stops. But uh, it was good to get that field finished. Now we'll head back to the yard. Uh, we'll get some planning done because we are hoping to make a start on the cotton. Uh, it can't be too far away from being ready. Uh, indeed, it, well, in fact, it could be ready once this rain passes. I'm not quite sure how long it's going to hang around for, but uh, we've got some planning to do there and get on the blower and organise a few cotton harvesters. I'm going to lease some of those to uh, get the cotton done. I'm not going to buy those. It's uh, quite a big investment. Even though we've got six and a half million or but over six point seven million dollars sitting there, we have uh, borrowed quite a bit of money to buy some of the equipment we have. So I'm not just going to go and throw it all away now on some cotton harvesters. Uh, not that I'm too worried about the financial side of this playthrough. It's uh, just more fun having a uh, plan all this big equipment. So let's get back up to the farm and uh, we'll sort things out up there. Just back up here at the main yard and just thought I'd stop in and have a quick look in the cotton field. All looking pretty good. Seems to uh, have grown pretty well. Not too far away from uh, being ready to harvest. And if we just jump over the other side here, just wanted to show you the canola as well because uh, it has got a lovely blanket of yellow flowers right across it. And fantastic. And if we just uh, go up a little bit higher, have a look at it. Nice and bright, uh, stretching for a very long distance. So we will uh, we'll be into harvesting some canola sometime soon too. But uh, first things first, we'll be to get over here and into the cotton fields. So I'm going to go spend some time in the office uh, organising some harvesters. And uh, we've got the planters there, you can just see them in the distance. We've got the planters out ready to uh, get them set up too. So we might spend a bit of time getting those sorted and uh, wait for this rain to pass. So hopefully next time I'm back with you uh, this rain's going to have gone and we'll be getting into this cotton. So just a bit of an update 20 past 6 in the evening the rain is still coming down so there's not really a lot we can get done today so uh, I think I might just head out to the house have a nice meal, get an early night uh, because if this rain's gone we are going to have a very busy day tomorrow. Once you've got both the planters out here ready to get filled up and uh, get going and hopefully I've got some cotton harvesters on the way. Uh, I've talked to some guys and uh, that's all lined up so they should be here in the morning. So I'll head over to the house and uh, see you when the sun comes up. Alright good morning everyone, welcome back. We are out here with the planters and getting them all set up. So got the seed tender out here, got some seed in the back of it. I just need to get it positioned correctly next to the uh, fill point. I think if we just pull forward like that I should be able to swing that round and hopefully I'm a little bit too far if we back up just a touch. Oops I had it right there, back that way, there we go. Alright so we're getting that filling now. Go over here and have a look. Perfect, that's going in there, you can see it running up the conveyor and coming out up the top. So we'll get this first one filled up. Uh, we'll probably have to fill the tender up before we can fill the next one up because uh, these things really suck the seed out of the back of the tender. And then we've got to get the anhydrous tanks and then we'll be off to the field. So I'm just going to uh, get that done quickly and uh, then next time I will uh, see you over at the field all ready to get started with some planting. Oh, just as the two seeders head over to the field, I've just stopped in here to have a look at our cotton, and it is all good to go. A little bit damp from the rain, uh, but not too bad. And with this, uh, where the sun is, be out somewhere. If this cloud can burn off, uh, we'll certainly get some good drying in it, and be ready to pick. Hopefully later today. So uh, the 
Cotton harvesters are all on their way. Uh, they should be here sometime this morning, coming down in a convoy of trucks. Uh, not quite sure exactly how many just yet, but uh, they will be here. And then on the other side here, our canola. Also good to go. So uh, we won't be getting into that in this episode. I'm just going to focus on getting that planting underway and then getting started in the cotton. And we'll save the canola for next time. But uh, we'll jump over and meet the uh, tractors over in the other field. Alright, here is the first of the planters. And the uh, John Deere cannot be too far behind. We're going to hop in the quad track and uh, get everything set up. Get the course play course all set up for this. And uh, get them ready to get going. Head out here into the field. We're going to put soybeans into this one, so I've already got those all uh, selected. And I'm just going to head around the corner a little bit, do a slightly wider area. Just imagine that that uh, little piece up in here is going to be a little bit difficult for the planter. But uh, here is as good a place as any. Right, so we'll just very quickly go through and have a look at what we're going to set up here. We use the seeding course, we go for course generation, we're on the field here which I've called number 3, uh, we're going to go around just the once, we're going to detect islands, uh, we know these are the three uh, mounds in the middle of the field, multiple tools, two, uh, we're going to start work on our headlands, and we've got our width set, so I'm pretty sure that should be all we need, so I'll uh, generate and see what comes up. Right, and there is the uh, course it's generated, so I'm not too happy with that because it does give some short runs up in here. Uh, might be the least congested, uh, but I'm going to actually try and do this on a north-south direction. So we'll just uh, change the direction here to 360 or 0 and try generating that one and see what impact that has. Alright, and there we go. We've finally, after about five minutes of uh, thinking about it, got a course generated. So, apart from the tight little turn up right where we are now, I think that one looks uh, just as good as the other one. So, I think we'll go with that. And uh, I guess we'll end up seeing how things work out in the end. So, if we go back in here, we will save this as I think it's field three beta uh, times two. And then we can apply that course to the other planter. But for now, there's nothing more to do than say from the first waypoint, off you go. Now while the quad track gets going up there, we will get this one all set up as well. So we should just be able to go in here, find that course, build three cedar, load that up. Now we'll set this one to right, that one's running on the left hand side. And should be able to now they start from the first waypoint and go to it. So it's driven out here, got to the first waypoint, getting the air seeder unfolded. And it should, in just a moment, be uh, ready to go. Make sure we do have soybean selected. I'd hate to uh, have planted one crop without the other. Uh, but I can see soybeans there in the, the green showing up. And uh, just at the same time, the seed tender here is turning up with some uh, more seed. So they are ready to go now. They're all unfolded and uh, should start driving any minute. And there we go. They are off as well. So we're uh, underway with getting some planting done in uh, this field over here, which we've only just really finished harvesting the point we've still got some uh, rather untidily stored uh, header trailers there as well and we'll have to uh, get over and get those tidied up but I will just uh, hang out with these guys for a little bit capture a little bit of footage with them and uh, then head back and see if the cotton harvesters are there so we can make a start on that So make sure that you don't miss out, just be there.
We're taking our shot, bring what you got. We're going all the way to the top. We will hear the sound of one million people screaming our names when we're backstage. We'll play loud, surfing the crowd. Everybody's jumping around. Yeah, that's the place where I want to be. Going on stage, headline on a Saturday night. Gonna quit my job. Never wanna have no boss. I just wanna play my rock and roll like they do on the radio. Tommy's got brand new drums, and I still have my old guitar. And John said this next song's gonna be real good if you know what I mean. Round and round the world we'll go, putting on the greatest show. So make sure that you don't miss out. Just be there. We're taking our shot, bring what you got. We're going all the way to the top. We will hear the sound of one million people screaming our names when we're backstage. We'll play loud, surfing the crowd. Everybody's jumping around. Yeah, that's the place where I want to be. Going on stage headline on a Saturday night. So make sure that you don't miss out. Just be there. Oh, just be there. We're taking our shot. Bring what you got. We're going all the way to the top. We will hear the sound of one million people screaming our names when we're backstage. We'll play loud, surfing the crowd. Everybody's jumping around. Yeah, that's the place where I want. And here we have them. The cotton harvesters are on the farm. So they are all queued up here. Uh, the uh, collision detection actually on these, stepping aside for a minute for auto drive, wasn't that good. I don't know whether perhaps there's not a collision on the trailer. Uh, so the trucks couldn't detect it. I'm not quite sure what that was, but we've had a, uh, a few nose to tails with these, which has dislodged a few of the cotton harvesters. But I'm pretty sure they all made it. We've got eight of them total. What I think I might do, instead of unloading them all here, we'll take them down to the entrance of the field one by one, I'm unloaded down there, and uh, we'll get started on getting this cotton harvested. So we've just got the first of the cotton harvesters down here by the field, and the way these trailers are set up are the uh, custom, custom modding low boys. We can detach them from the front of the trailer, drive off with the hitch still attached to the back of the uh, truck and then if we go back and jump into the cotton harvester we can uh, just start this up and drive it off there we go, right off the front just like that and uh, we're going to get this parked over here ready to go in the field in fact I can probably even set it up with uh, Hold it up into position, ready to start harvesting. So we'll just get that one positioned about there. Now we'll have to come through and set up a course play route. Now eight cotton harvesters we're going to have going here. That'll be the most we've had on a course play course. This truck can get hooked back up and we'll just send them back on their way. We uh, won't need them around here for a wee while now. So uh, they can go back and park up probably back down at the uh, dealer shop area. That attached there, and uh, fold the trailer and close that off. And using auto drive, 
Tell them to go down towards the, uh, might send them to the bail cell point. That'll be out of the way. So off they go and we'll go and jump in the next one. Back over here in the cotton field, we've got all the uh, harvesters unloaded now and the trucks have all gone back to their depot. And I am just going to get this set up with all eight of these running on course play. So obviously, as you all know, first thing we need to do is get course play set up. So I think uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to run over the crop. I know it's a little bit of a no-no, but just, uh, just to get this set up the best way, I want to do it on a straight edge. Uh, so I'm just going to run back down here and do a Yui about now. Turn around and uh, set up our course from about here. And that just gives us a straight edge before the corner where we can get this going. So we just bring up course play. Do you want to be on field work there as an option? Now we want to do course generation. Field seven. We'll just do the one headland pass. Now the critical part, we want to crank that up to eight. Uh, we want to start on our headland pass and I think for the field center we'll just do up and downs. I don't think that matters. And uh, we've got our width set there. So I'm just going to hit generate course and uh, I think we should be able to expect to know what this will come up with. Uh, but we'll just wait and see. Alright, and that was a nice quick one. Not too much to think about there. So if I hop back now, I'm going to save that as F7 Cotton Harvest times eight and uh, save that there now the one set one setting I do need to change I need to make this very handy very left hand of the uh, harvesters you want it to run around the outside and that should be about ready to go we don't want auto drive we'll start from the first waypoint back up just a little bit because it's probably just a little bit behind us and I'm just gonna hit drive course on that and uh, see how we go, see if we get started on harvesting some cotton, and we are. You can see our cotton filling up down in the corner here, and obviously it's uh, disappearing off the field. So that is a, a good result. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to let this one get around the corner just a touch, and then I'm going to stop them. Now the trucks that are coming back, just, uh, FYI, those had some wheat left in them, and they were over in the other field. Uh, where the fence and John Deere's had been harvesting, so I've just been down to the grain cell points and uh, got their load sold. But we're just going to stop the uh, stop the cotton harvest just there. It's already 20% uh, full. I'm going to get a little bit more cotton off this field than I thought. And uh, we've already saved that, so I'm just going to run around and get all eight of these combines or harvesters up and going. And uh, have them going on a little bit of a convoy mode and uh, try and see if we can get some cool looking shots with them all line astern. And there we go, we have got our cotton harvest underway. All eight of the cotton harvesters are running line astern. It's uh, pretty cool at the moment, not quite evenly spaced out, but uh, not too far off it at all. So we're just going to let them carry on going. I think I might have underestimated how much space they can take although this looks like it's only going to do a four I can do a very small bale so I wonder if I've got variable bale capacity mod set up and it's going to uh, conflict with that so I might just have a look at one of the others and see how they're going as well interesting so I've got the just had a look in here I do have bale capacity set at 10,000 so I wonder if that is a weight because I have unit convert on or is that a ah uh, that's a pre-collect chamber that's actually made a quarter of a bale ah uh, I see this thing now so it's got a pre these ones have a pre uh, pre-collect chamber where they fill up into or they start making the bale so that makes a bit more sense all right so it's not going to be quite as bad as I thought I was a little bit worried there that uh we're going to fill up pretty quick. But we'll just uh, jump back in the front here and I'll uh, let them run. We'll watch along, see how they go, get a bit of a uh, montage going of the cotton harvest. But uh, that's pretty cool having those eight all running together.
Now my plan is to get a bale collection horseplay route going as well. What I'd like to try and do with that is have auto drive integrated so that the bale collectors pick the bales up from in the field and take them down to the sell point. So uh, we'll have a look once we've got some pails and uh, see if I can get that to work or not. That would be pretty neat if we can. Just finished the uh, first run down the side of the field along the road and we're heading along the top of the field now. Uh, but I just thought I'd hang out in here because I think we should just about be ready to spit a bale out. There it comes. We'll just watch the uh, animation here. It rolls out. And uh, gets lowered to the ground. Meanwhile, the chamber on the front keeps on uh, filling. So it's uh, quite a good gig. Looks like it actually carries along for a while. I'm assuming when the next bale comes out, it drops them off. But we should now have quite a collection of uh, bales all coming out at the same time. There we go. That one's dropping one. I mean, this one is going to be full pretty soon too. make a liar of me aren't you now Mr Cotton Harvester there we go so uh, yeah, this is all working pretty well it was I did notice the two down in there in the corner had a little bit of a disagreement when they were turning around that tight angle but uh, they seem to all be going pretty well we're uh, traveling close together so we're uh, just gonna leave them going and uh, might go and start making some arrangements for our uh, bale collection. See how uh, we're going to deal with that. There we go, that answers the question. We've just created another bale, so it has gone and dropped the first one off there and is opening up for the next one. So uh, I'm guessing this one will now sit there and get carried around as well. There's our first bale on the ground to uh, be picked up, which will mean I expect that the uh, harvester just on the inside of us won't be far away either, and uh, neither will the rest of them from having another bale to drop off.
All right, you can just see the cotton balers coming back down front of the pass. So they've been around the headlands and they've done an up and a back now. So making good progress across the field. So it's about time we get some of these bales picked up. So what I've got here, I've got the three fast tracks that we used for the other bale collection. And on the back is a uh, bale collector for these round bales. Now this will pick up three round bales. Now I had hoped to be able to use auto drive in conjunction with course play for this with the bale collection mode but I can not get that to work no matter how hard I try so what we do have here I just bring up course play is I've driven a course all the way down to the other um, cotton cell point down at the uh, down at the uh, main cell points down at the shop and this is this course here, so if I just, uh, in fact if I click there you can see it, uh, it starts here, goes all the way down the road, all the way down to the cell point and back, and these are the two start points here on the side. So I've done all that uh, and I've tested it, it is working. So I'm just going to set this up to go, so we've got uh, our bale collection mode there, we want to start at our collector wrap bales, and we want to be on field 7. So apart from that, there's not too much else we want to do, I've got the speed set to max and uh, the only thing I wanted to try and use was auto drive or fill and un uh, unload and refill but it just did not want to do it so we're just going to have to run with it like this so I'm going to set this one off I'm going to wait till he's full and on his way out of the field before doing the next one and then do that with the third one the idea being that they're not fighting over bales in the field We've uh, got over here, we're getting our first bale picked up and loaded. So he should, now that he's got that one on, we'll get turned around and go and pick one of the others up over there. I am a little bit worried that they might try and pick up the bales that are sitting on the back of the cotton uh, balers. But so far so good. We'll just get that one there picked up and wait till they've got the third one and on their way out and we'll go and get the other or the next tractor going. Let these guys run down to the cell point and then I'll uh, show you how I've got the cell point working. And then we should just about be able to let them go on their own. Go over and check on how the planters are going and uh, leave these guys running. There we go, that is our third bale all picked up. He should now fold up and go into a bit of a uh, transport mode. There we go, that looks like it's lifting up. Spin around in the uh, wheel there. It's lifted up and we'll head out the gate down the road and get these sold there we go on his way out right we'll leave him to it and uh, we'll go and jump on one of the other ones all right there goes the next of the uh, bale trailers so racing out that gate means we can uh, should be able to press go on this one and have all three of them running so there you go we can see him going down the road we just bring up the map you can see the other ones almost at the sell point. So we'll jump over to him and uh, watch them get the bales sold. So just pulling down in here into the bale sell point. Just up here on the left, pretty much right in front of this uh, open barn. So we set a unload point on the course play. So I'll just actually bring that up. I should be able to show you. There you go, you can see it. That's the unload point. So uh, when he gets to here... Should unfold the trailer like it's going to unload. Looks similar to how the uh, straw bales unloaded. It just tips up a little bit and then the uh, bales will disappear and we'll get some income off them. There we go, almost $69,000, so about $23,000 per bale. Which is, uh, which is not a bad piece of income. So this guy will now go and carry on the route. We can see the other one coming down there and the other one's just on its way out of the field. So. Looks like we should have them reasonably well spaced, which might avoid some of those issues we had with the straw bales where they tried to uh, argue over who was picking up the bale. Uh, but I guess time will tell, and we'll leave them to it. So just while the uh, cotton all seems to be going quite well at the moment, I've jumped over here to check on progress with the planters. So uh, we're just in the quad track here, making their way across the field. So they've done a decent amount. Already, we haven't had to refill them yet. Still got a uh, third of their seed and just over a bit of a third of their ammonia left. 
Uh, so there, there'll be a few more runs they can do before we'll need to uh, top them up. Probably a, probably a year and back, I imagine. Might use up most of that. Uh, both the seed tenders are at the end they're heading to. Both parked up there at the moment, so uh, we don't want to have them running out at the wrong end of the field. So that's all, uh, all going pretty well. Now, one thing I have done is I've swapped out the 9RX with the 9RT. I was having a few issues with the 9RX uh, turning and getting caught on itself and just struggling to turn. So uh, we've gone for the 9RT, we know it does a very good job of turning on in rows. Uh, so we've made that change there. Obviously we didn't have the problem last time we used these cedars because we had the uh, fence running them. So like I said everything's going pretty well. Similar amount of seed and ammonia in this planter. So we'll just leave them going, we'll uh, get them filled up when they need to and get this field finished. Alright so we just uh, jumped back in here in one of the cotton harvesters. Things are going pretty smoothly at the moment. We've got the tractors picking up the bales, we've got the harvesters going, we've got the planter going. Uh, everything is pretty much tracking without me having to do too much at the moment. Well I thought everything was going smoothly, but as it turns out, the uh, bale trailers are not continuing. Now I've done a little bit more of a look, now, according to the course play page on GitHub, uh, they don't actually support cotton as a bale type. Now I don't know whether it's because these were the round ones or what it was, but if I get down close to these, you know, there's quite a few down here to collect. If I turn this on, press drive course going to unfold and it's going to detect this bale and it's going to pick it up and uh, it'll be interesting to see whether it now detects one of the other ones I don't know whether it's just because we're on such a big field that the tractors are struggling to find the bales on the field or uh, what the cause is but one of them got only part way down and then gave up uh, this one sort of stopped working as well but it seems to be once we get down here they uh, work alright, so all I can put it down to is just the size of the field and the fact the bales are too far away. However, we just quickly look at the map and you recall, I had the start and end of the course for this field here and they were able to pick the bales up all the way down the end here. This distance is much less, so I'm really a little bit stumped what that is. So we'll uh, keep on going with trying to get them organized try and get as many bales as we can uh, picked up and moved otherwise I do have the uh, big bale trailers we had uh, auto load so worst case I will come in here and have to manually drive and pick up all of those with the uh, big straw uh, auto load trailers which do do cotton bales so we'll uh, give this a little bit more of a chance and see what happens Alright, so we're just going to ride along here with this cotton harvest for a while. I'm uh, not quite sure what's going to happen with the cotton trailers, with the tractors. I have a feeling that these bales that are up the top end here of the field are going to be a bit hard for them to locate and pick up. So uh, we might, like I said before, have to uh, run around and do those ourselves. A few up this way. The three trailers are all running at the moment, so we'll just leave them going, see what ends up happening uh, and see if it does work or not. But for now I think we might just ride along with this harvester for a wee while, do a little bit of a time lapse before we wrap things up for this episode.
we're just down here back with the planters and just getting them topped up so we've got the anhydrous uh, tanker there to top up the anhydrous cart and we're just going to get the grain auger out here or the seed auger sorry and get the tender to fill the seed hopper to position the little dot over top of that there we go all right so that's getting the seed hopper filled up if we jump in the cab we should be able to tell the anhydrous tank to uh, fill up from the truck there there we go and you can see our anhydrous is now going up so it's the uh, good little resupply setup we've got going there now we've got the uh, quad track is still going I actually missed picking that up when it was at the end of the field here so there's every possibility it's going to run out halfway down the field which is a bit of a uh, bit of an annoyance but uh, nothing we can't handle so we'll just get this folded back up and underway seating again all right there we go that is all back underway I'll just go down and check on the quad and see uh, how it is going for supplies it's only got a few bushels of seed left it certainly is not going to be enough for it to get back to the other end of the field and as fate would have it it is right down the wrong end but uh, it does have probably enough anhydrous to get back so I might grab the seed tender and just head down this way knowing we will have to fill it up and then we can uh, top up the anhydrous when we get back down to the other end I managed to intercept the quad track here before it uh, ran out so one thing I've never noticed before on the air cut is the flashing light now I'm assuming that is because it is almost empty so we'll just uh, get that opened out and have a look once we get some uh, seed up in there whether that light disappears all right and there we are we're getting it filled and the lights just turned off so it's obviously a fill level indicator light so learn something new every day did not know that uh, cart had that it's a nice little touch from custom modding there we go there is all the seed out of the uh, tender so we'll send this one back to the farm get it topped up again and uh, we'll get the quad track back underway and there we go on the move again we will have to stop at the other end and get that anhydrous topped up and uh, while we'll do it we'll top up the seed just so we know that we're uh, all good to go for a bit longer uh, but I better not leave the truck there so I'll jump out and go and grab that and get it back to the farm all right as I said we'd uh, catch up again at the end so we've just got the seed getting topped off there and if we just head over here we'll uh, get the anhydrous tank just a little bit closer and get this all topped up as well all right, I've got it sorted now. We had the uh, tanker parked around the wrong way. Can't quite see properly, but the uh, valves are... Oh, there we go. Right there. Valves are on this side. So uh, we have to be on this side to get it to fill. And the trailer only fills from one side. So we might just get out of the way in time for the uh, 9RT coming back down there. It's going to be pretty touch and go. Get my uh, auger folded in. Here we go, let's just pull out of the way, we'll pull forward and uh, let them turn around first. Right, and there we go, both back underway. So both uh, cedars now pretty much topped up and uh, they should. Just quickly look at the map. I'd expect they'll get a good, probably two thirds of the way over there I imagine. Remember they did the headland pass which was a lap each plus all of this without topping up. So. I imagine they're actually probably going to be pretty close to getting that all done in one load. Not quite, but uh, it'll be tight. So we'll just leave them going. I see there's one little notice there about one of our fast tracks. So we'll just jump back over to the cotton fields before uh, we wrap things up. Alright, so we're just back over here. Now this fast track actually ended up doing three or four loads, even after I'd stopped the other ones. Now what I'm actually wondering is whether... The tractors are getting confused because it detects the bales on the back of the harvesters and goes to pick them up but they've moved or they're not there so it thinks it's finished because that bale that was going to go pick up isn't there. I'm, not, I'm just speculating. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave the cotton harvesters to finish this field, have all their bales all on the ground and then try and set the tractors going again uh, and see if they are able to clear the field without having any interference or whether they have the same issue where they 
think they've finished, even though, as you can see, there's three bales less than 100 metres away from us. So we'll test that out next time. Uh, but I'm going to wrap things up there. So the cotton harvesters are quite a way across. I've probably got about 45 minutes of work left. Uh, the planters are running. They've got about two and a half hours to get all that finished. And uh, it's been a productive day. We managed to get that uh, oat field finished as well. So next time we'll be wrapping up this cotton. Seeing if we can get these cotton uh, trailers to work. And making a start in the canola. And possibly we will get the uh, combines going in the other fields while the while we're doing uh, the canola so that is all from me for now i do hope you have enjoyed that and i will catch you in the next one